A battery is not a box of magic. It is a tiny factory that trades atoms for usable power. Today, we will fly through a lithium ion cell with a photoreal mechanical view. We will pass hair thin layers, dive into a cathode particle the size of a red blood cell, then zoom down to electrons and atoms. If you have ever asked why charging needs a rising voltage, or why ions move slowly while current feels instant, this story will make it click. By the end, lithium will not be a buzzword, it will feel like the true heart of modern energy. Entering the cell. Imagine a lithium ion cell as a stack of paper thin sheets rolled or layered into a can or pouch. On each side, there is a metal current collector. It is the highway for electrons inside the solid parts. Coated onto that metal is active material mixed with binder and conductive carbon, so the layer does not crack and electrons can find a path. One coated stack becomes the cathode side, another becomes the anode side. Between them is a separator soaked in electrolyte. The separator is porous like a sponge. It prevents the two electrodes from touching, which would cause a short, but it still lets lithium ions pass through its pores. The electrolyte is a liquid that carries ions, not electrons, so it forces electrons to take the outside route through your wires. People often draw charging as if one lithium ion and one electron leave one side and travel together to the other side. The idea is right, but the timing is off. Electrons respond almost instantly through metals and carbon networks. Ions drift slowly through liquid and through tiny pores. That gap in speed is the first clue that a battery is not one simple swap. It is a chain of coupled steps that keep charge balanced everywhere, every moment. To understand those steps, we have to start even smaller than the electrodes. We have to start with atoms. From hydrogen to lithium. The story begins with hydrogen, the simplest atom. It has one proton in its nucleus and one electron. We cannot take a normal picture of an atom, so we use models that match experiments. In those models, the nucleus is heavy and stable, while the electron is a tiny negative particle that moves so fast it becomes a cloud. The cloud is not just a blur, it is the region where the electron is allowed to exist. Quantum rules decide that region, and they also decide how many electrons can fit in each shell. Hydrogen is reactive because its single electron is easy to share. Add one proton and you get helium. Helium pulls in a second electron, filling the first shell. A filled shell is a calm place. Helium holds together tightly so it barely reacts. Add one more proton and you get lithium. Now, a new shell must form outside the first one. Lithium ends up with a lone outer electron, sitting farther from the pull of the nucleus. That electron is loosely held, so lithium is eager to give it away. Here is why that matters for batteries. Energy storage is about moving electrons and ions to states that are higher or lower in energy. Lithium is light, reactive, and common enough to use at scale. Compared with hydrogen, lithium can give up its electron with roughly 3 volts more driving force. That larger push is why lithium-based cells can reach useful voltages, while hydrogen is not a common battery chemistry. The simplified picture and the real one. Now bring that chemistry into a real cell. During charging, the charger pulls electrons out of the cathode and pushes them into the anode through the external circuit. At the same time, lithium ions leave the cathode, cross the electrolyte and separator, and end up stored in the anode. During discharge, the process reverses. Electrons run through your device, and lithium ions drift back through the electrolyte. The missing detail is that the battery must stay electrically neutral in bulk. If electrons move instantly, but ions lag, charge would pile up, and the reaction would choke, so the cell uses local balancing acts. Every time an electron is removed from the cathode, a positive lithium ion is also released from the cathode's crystal framework into the electrolyte. Every time an electron arrives at the anode, the electrolyte near the anode must supply a positive ion to keep the liquid from becoming too negative. That means a cell is constantly juggling charge at interfaces, not just at the ends. 
To make the picture concrete, we will use a cathode material called lithium nickel oxide. Do not worry about names like anode or cathode being positive or negative. What matters is function. One structure holds lithium in a layered crystal and can let it go. The other structure, usually graphite, can accept lithium and store it between carbon layers. With that, we are ready to watch charging in slow motion. Charging at the cathode. In lithium nickel oxide, nickel and oxygen bond strongly. Within that structure, lithium is the easy giver. It can lose an electron and become a positive lithium ion. When you connect a charger, lithium ions are pulled out of the layered cathode crystal and enter the electrolyte. At almost the same moment, electrons are pulled out of the cathode and rush through the conductive network to the current collector, then into the wire. As electrons leave, the remaining nickel oxide framework becomes more electronegative. In simple terms, it feels more desperate to borrow electrons back. That creates a useful effect. Early in the charge, removing electrons is easier. Later, it becomes harder. So the charger must apply a higher voltage as the cell approaches full charge. This is one reason charging curves rise instead of staying flat. Meanwhile, the lithium ions that leave the cathode do not travel naked. The electrolyte is made of solvents, and the positive lithium ion attracts the solvent molecules. They surround the ion and form a solvation shell, like a coat that keeps it stable in the liquid. Across the cathode surface, millions of tiny release events happen at once. The result is a cloud of solvated lithium ions near the cathode side of the separator. Those ions begin to drift and diffuse toward the anode, but they do it slowly, step by step what the electrolyte and anode build together. The electrolyte does three jobs at once. It carries lithium ions through the separator pores. It blocks electrons, so electrons must take the outer path through the circuit. And it tries to keep the liquid electrically neutral. To do that, the electrolyte contains dissolved lithium salt, which creates a background soup of positive and negative ions. It also contains additives such as vinylene carbonate, chosen because they react in controlled ways. During early charging, lithium ions pile up near the cathode side of the electrolyte, while the anode side becomes temporarily depleted. That difference is a concentration gradient. It pushes ions to spread out, like ink spreading through water. Only later, once the gradient grows and the anode interface is ready, do lithium ions move into the anode in large numbers. At the anode, graphite particles get a first cycle makeover. Lithium, solvent, and additives react at the graphite surface and form a protective film called the Solid Electrolyte Interface, or SEI. This layer is solid. It stops the solvent from breaking down again and again. Yet it still allows lithium ions to pass through. Vinylene carbonate helps the SEI become more stable, which is a big reason good cells can survive thousands of cycles. The cost is that building the SEI consumes some lithium permanently. Roughly 5-10% to of the lithium inventory can be used up in this first formation step. That lost capacity is handled at the factory, so the customer never sees it happen. Storing lithium and releasing energy. Once the SEI exists, charging becomes more orderly. An arriving electron at the anode can pair with a lithium ion to make a neutral lithium atom. That lithium atom does not become part of the graphite crystal. Instead, it slips between graphene layers. This is intercalation. It is like sliding cards into a deck without tearing the deck apart. The most stable packing is about one lithium atom for every six carbon atoms, so the anode fills in a predictable way. Now, the cell is charged. Reactive lithium sits trapped between carbon layers, holding electrons that would love to escape. But escape requires two things at the same time. The electrons need a conductive path back to the cathode, and the electrolyte must be ready to accept the positive lithium ions that are left behind when lithium gives up electrons. Connect a load, and that path opens. Electrons shuffle through the circuit in a fast cascade, like a wave passing through a crowd. At the anode, lithium atoms give up electrons and become positive ions, which re-enter the electrolyte. 
at the cathode. The electronegative nickel oxide framework accepts electrons and pulls lithium ions out of the electrolyte to rebuild lithium nickel oxide. The electrons and ions reaching the cathode are often different from the pair that left the anode. Balance comes from local exchanges. At the start of discharge, the push is strong, often near 4.2 volts. As lithium leaves the anode and returns to the cathode, that imbalance shrinks, so voltage falls. Many cells treat about 3.0 volts as a practical endpoint. Then the cycle can begin again. A lithium ion battery is a chemical machine that spans huge scales at once. Atoms trade electrons. Ions crawl through liquid. Electrons answer in a blink through metal. Separators, solvation shells, and the SEI quietly keep the chaos under control. When you picture these steps, the battery stops being a black box and starts feeling mechanical and real. If this walkthrough fills in the missing pieces, we can explore other cathodes, fast charging limits, and aging next, thanks to the researchers, modelers, and supporters who help keep the details right and share it with one friend who loves science. See you soon.